you going guys? Welcome to another episode of the Fedican Podcast. Today is just a special episode that we have for you. It was during my time in Adelaide with Ahmed. We got the opportunity to interview Mohamed Toure. And for those of you who don't know who he is, he's actually a professional soccer player playing for Adelaide United in the A-League. You spoke a bit about his journey this far, how it's changed his life and people around him as well. And we appreciate him making the time for us in his busy schedule. So, enjoy. Not everyone wants to always be talked to. There's some days you come and you just want to be by yourself. Yeah. But we kind of have we can't have those days. Is that we have to always talk, communicate, which is all right. But like, it's not as exciting as everyone thought it'd be. Oh, you're you're a professional. You go to high school. I still wanted to live like a normal kid. Yeah. I still wanted to go do something stupid in the streets, and people don't say, "Oh, that's Mohammed Toure." Mm. Assalamualaikum. Thanks for joining us, bro. Appreciate it. So what we usually do, we start with our guests is some icebreaker questions, yeah. just to make sure like you're comfortable and all that. I want to know because it's Ramadan now. What's one thing you love about Ramadan? It could be anything, to be honest. Anything. Um, the fact that it brings us all together. Yeah, I think it's beautiful. And what um, if you could meet any any person? Who would it be? Like any, sit down and have a conversation with any person. Yeah, any person. Just like one on one, ask me questions, whatever. Like you know, learn from or you know, it could be soccer players, anything. Soccer player, probably Ronaldo. Okay, why is that? He's just, I look up to Ronaldo. Okay, He's one of my favorite players. Okay, is that is that because of like his journey or more of like personality? Both his journey and personality. He's a hard worker. So yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. All right, so we're going to kick it off. We're going to start at the start. So I've heard that, if uh, correct me if I'm wrong, your parents are from Guinea? Is that Liberia. Right? Liberia, okay. And were you born here or were you born over there? I was born in Guinea. Okay. And then when did your family come to Australia? 2004. Okay. And when, when were you born? Were you born that year or the year after? I was born in 2004 as well. Okay, mashallah. Okay. So... Where did the soccer come about? Like the interest from, is it from a young age, your parents? Well, my dad said he played soccer, but growing up, I wasn't really interested. Okay. And then my older brother started playing and then I just wanted to join as well. So then from a young age, as I got older, I started liking the sport, so. Okay. And then also like, it was all through, so if I'm not mistaken, you have two brothers, that's right? No. How many brothers do you have? Four. Mashallah. Okay. And they all play soccer? Yeah, everyone. Okay. So that kind of, I guess, developed the competitive nature from day one? Yeah, everyone just, we always used to just play in the backyard and yeah. everyone wants to win. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's good, man. And then when do you think it hit you or any of your brothers to actually realize that you can take this to the next level, like kind of take this serious? <laughs> if that even happened, I don't know if it... Yeah, at the start, I just thought... I thought soccer was something we do like, what? I thought it was like a fun thing. Yeah. Like a school thing, just yeah, go hobby. around, yeah. kick a ball, yeah, it's like a hobby. I always put in my head that I was gonna get another job. I never thought okay. soccer would one day become a job. I just used to like kicking the ball around, like the feeling, you know? Yeah. Kicking the ball around in the rain. And then I turned 15 and I joined a professional team, Adelaide United. Yeah, how did that come about? Do you remember much about how the opportunity came? Yeah, it was random. My brother started that season, so yeah. he was playing and everyone was celebrating him. Okay. Yeah, Marshall, yeah, he's yeah, professional. Yeah, yeah. Then he went away with the national Australian team under 23. Okay. Then a couple injuries and all of a sudden I was next in line. And it was just crazy, like... Things happened so quick? Yeah, everything happened quick. I was still 15, so I was still really young. Yeah. And all of a sudden they, I was a professional and had higher expectations now. So. Yeah, like that's amazing, like how not many players even get the chance at 15, like let alone the youth team, but then also the first team opportunities, like yeah, I know. it's pretty rare. Like I, even if you look at European leagues, there's not many players you see out there in that age getting the chance. Yeah, it was strange. Yeah. But yeah, I had to And you, what, you were in year 10 at the time? Yeah, year 10. So how, how was that experience in high school? Because honestly, like I think any kid, like that's a high school dream, bro. Yeah. Like being like playing first team, you know, with your mates, like talking it up. Yeah, um, I remember I used to, we all used to talk about it. My friend, we always say, imagine playing in a professional team at yeah. school. This attention, this. You kind of think you would like the attention, mm. people coming up to you, but then once you start playing, it becomes normal and then sometimes annoying yeah. when you go to school. 
and you have to be nice, asking questions, yeah. how was the game, this, this. And like everyone, we're all humans, even with professional soccer players, mm. not everyone wants to always be talked to. There's some days you come and you just want to be by yourself. Yeah. But we kind of have, we can't have those days is that we have to always talk, communicate, which is all right, but like, it's not as exciting as everyone thought it'd be. Oh, you're, you're a professional, you go to high school. I still wanted to live like a normal kid. Yeah. I still wanted to go do something stupid in the streets and people don't say, oh, that's Mohamed Toure. Mm. I just, like, it's like that. Oh, I want to go to the cinema with my friends and I want to muck around. But like, when I'm there, I kind of tell them, let's behave. Yeah. Some of them might see me out and say, oh, I saw Mohamed Toure today. He was doing this, he was doing that. So mm. it kind of becomes a bit harder. It kind of takes away your childhood. But apart from that, it's not bad. Yeah, because I think people don't realize that. Like, they don't realize what comes with the fame. Because so many people, like, look for the fame like let's say for example michael jordan but then no one actually wants to be the person who he is which is like not sometimes he kind of go out like you said mm. or he he kind of leave his like hotel he kind of go visit his parents or something mm. because obviously well, i'm not as big as michael jordan no, but, but i understand saying, like, yeah, fame in general i understand what you mean like yeah you can't be so many things because you're not only representing yourself i'm representing my club yeah and i don't want people looking at Adelaide united as a you know bad club so you have to be careful yeah. <laughs> can't get caught in KFC with your friends like <laughs> yeah. but yeah apart from that those are it's always positive like everything has negative to it yeah the positives are really good too so yeah yeah so so now that you scored on your debut is that right or you scored my home debut your home debut yeah. so that's at what 15 years old you scored yeah. and that's the youngest ever ever playing the A-League do you know yeah yeah mashallah congrats on thank that you, bro thank you that's an achievement, honestly. It might not even get broken. Your friend almost broke, I think. Nesta, yeah. Yeah, so close. that was close, but that's good. So how was the transition to like, not just debuting, but then it's like full-time professional? Because you're obviously still at high school, you're juggling the two. It's like, sometimes it's not even possible. Oh, that's what I'm thinking. Mm. How was it? Oh yeah, it got hard at the start because expectation for me when oh, you're just a young kid filling in for injuries yeah. but then when i started playing regularly regularly it started becoming harder mm. and yeah 11 started becoming really really stretched there was days where i just told my teacher like, let's just cut it i'm yeah. gonna go home and tell my parents i'm not doing school anymore then this day i just wake up and be like i've been going to school for 12 years now why waste it since yeah, kindergarten yeah. Everything I've done to this point, I don't want to give up now. So I continued. Then in year 12 last year, started becoming really, really, really hard because now I'm more locked in. I'm getting older in the sport. Yeah. They're expecting more from me. The, the older you get, the more ex they expect. I'm no longer yeah. 15. I'm 17 now. So then, yeah, it just became really hard, stressful. But I still got through it somehow. Alhamdulillah, that's good. Thanks to the support of the teachers. Yeah. and But, yeah, it got challenging sometimes. Though. Yeah, that's good. And then how is it in terms of like the pressure with like expectations of performing? Because like you said, the older you got in the team and the playing professional, the expectations gradually rises. Mm. How was that for you? Because for you, like that transition happened so early compared to other players. Like mm. how did you able to deal with it in your age? Like even just your mentality? I just have to keep focusing on things mm. that I have control over and try to play my best. Because um, as much as people say, yes, you're young, people don't expect much. You could have a good game and then be the youngest goal scorer and then yeah. all of a sudden you're not playing well. And as much as people might say, oh, it doesn't matter, you're still young. It's still kind of, for me, it kind of hurts yeah. when you've been playing well and then you stop playing well. So I always, that was my biggest fear, just to like drop off. So I always try my hardest to try to be as consistent mm -hmm. as I can. And it's more a mentality thing. If you're mentally straight, you can do it. Yeah, well, if you believe in yourself, then you can do anything. Hmm. So what was what's your go-to like to work on your mentality? Is it like, you know, speaking or spending time with your family? Do you have like psychologists at the club or? Honestly. Was it just something you're just working on day to, week to week? Just my friends to be, all my family and friends. Just, I tend not to really think about things too much. Like hmm. I have friends where I would have games in two days. We have a big game in two days. I'm not going out, I'm not going on social. I can't do this. Like, I don't really seem to stress like that. I still take it really seriously, but like just going with the flow. Hmm. Before games, I don't really stress. Talk to family, be funny, warm up, start getting serious, obviously. But anything before that, I'm just an easygoing guy. So I don't really let things get to me. Yeah. So I think that's helped me a lot with my personality. Um, people say like, I'm just goofy. So yeah, I'm just always trying to, yeah, I'm always trying to, make it less serious, even though it's really serious, but just 
tell myself it's not that serious, it's not yeah, that serious, yeah. not that. Don't feel pressure. So and it's helped me a lot. That's good. Sometimes it's not as complicated as you might think it is. No, no. Yeah. Okay. So, what about in terms of like seeing your brother succeed, and then you know that competitive nature of like maybe trying to keep up, if not do better. Like, how's that been the transition? Him moving on as well and seeing him at a different club. Yeah, it was good. It yeah. was always good to have someone there to chase. Mm. Even though without him, I was always I would always be chasing because I was never the first choice number nine coming in because I'm okay. still really really young yeah so we're both in the same position so learning from him information he got from the coach he would pass it to me same vice versa trying to help each other as much and then when he left I just <laughs> I didn't feel the same but like I still had to focus on what I could do and yeah, he's yeah, over yeah. in Sydney doing what he can do so yeah because you have your own goals anyway so you're mostly focused on that yeah exactly okay understand. and what about in terms of aspiration for like you know, taking it to the international level, like representing your country like your brother did, he got the opportunity. Mm. Have you looked more in the future with that or are you taking it just like one thing at a time? Yeah, I'm still focusing on things right now, trying to get myself better. But of course, every kid that grows up in Australia yeah. wants to represent the Socceroos. Yeah. It's one of my biggest dreams. People say going to Europe. Yeah, I, I really want to go to Europe, but yeah. the number one goal for me is just representing my country at any major tournament. Yeah, that's no, that's beautiful to hear. It's good. Mm. So, what about in terms of so the full full time professional in terms of like nutrition, you know, having to be hundred percent with that. Mm. You know, eating are you eating your mum's food every week, or is it just like a bit of both? Like that doesn't sound as easy as said. Nah, it's always it's hard because sometimes after school with my friends, everyone wants to go quickly get a burger from Hungry yeah, Jacks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey boys, we can't do that. But yeah, it's alright. I still. I'm not perfect, obviously, and I was still really young, and I didn't understand the importance of nutrition. So every time after school, I'll go with my friends, maybe KFC, Zinger Box, this, yeah, that, yeah. this, that. But <laughs> as I'm getting older, I'm starting to, I'm not perfect right now. I still do those things, but I'm yeah. starting to learn more, I'm starting to cook for myself now. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just trying to learn good habits. Okay, so you said, obviously, with your friends, you seem like you're, you're a big person with hanging out with your friends, which is great. How is it in terms of, like, their support and like you know how often do you get to socialize in like you know juggling training and games because you're, you're obviously playing games interstate as well yeah. you're traveling how is all that yeah it's hard i don't really we're not hanging out all the time i have some family friends cousins that play in my team yaya Dukuli, okay yeah Alison. i still consider them as friends even though or more than that we're family yeah, yeah, yeah. are we always hanging out but my school friends or we don't really get to see each other during the week. They'll be working when they're free out of training. And then they have the weekend off, but I'm playing in Sydney. So when I get to hang out with them, I spend the time really well. And we always have a quality time. Yeah, that's good. Okay, it's good to hear that you're making sure you're balancing out the family and that. Yeah, of course. So I want to ask you as well, what about the, like balancing like your dean with soccer as well? Like, because obviously, in certain environments, you have to take initiative yourself, you know, with mm. like the simple as daily prayers and all that, mm. even Juma. How is that? Okay, yeah, it's kind of challenging, but yeah. obviously, God comes first. Um, things like Juma, if I have training, mm. it's easy. I've, I've heard so many people say, I'll go to Juma, I'll skip training. Yeah, it's easy saying that. It's one of those things you don't know until you're in the situation, if you know yeah. what I mean. Um, but every time I get the chance to go pray Juma, I always do five daily prayers. If I'm home, I'll do it. If I'm at training, obviously I can't pray while training. So yeah. it gets a bit challenging, but it's life. Life's not easy. Yeah. I just have to live with it. That's the life I've chosen. I want to be a professional athlete. So yeah. balancing it, it's a bit difficult, but I can still do it. It's nothing too crazy. Yeah, okay. That's good to hear that you're still balanced out, alhamdulillah. Okay, so I have some quick fire questions. Mm. So hopefully you can answer these really quickly. Mm. So, favorite player of all time? Ronaldo. R9 or CR7? CR7. Okay. So, okay, that answers my second question then. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi's better. Okay. Yeah. So, even though Ronaldo is your best player, Messi. Why is that though? Ronaldo is like such a figure, you know? You mm. see his Instagram, he's the most followed. Yeah, he is, yeah. That's for a reason, because you just want to see Ronaldo 
Yeah, he's like a presence. Like he's like a, more of an icon. Yeah. Yeah, he's the big. He's the big moment guy. Yeah. Like in Champions League final, you need a goal. He's gonna score. Yeah. But when it comes to the skill all around footballer, I think Messi's the best. Yeah, it seems like Messi is like someone you can't even aspire to be. Nah, you can't. It just seems impossible. Just he's on his own. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what about the best player you've played with or against? Like this far? <sighs> best player I've played with? Yeah. Currently, I play with Mahavi Lopez. Yeah. He played in La Liga. Yeah. For long, he captained. He's the right back? Yeah, he's the right yeah. back. I played with Craig Goodwin, current soccer Goodwin, rule. Yeah. Too many. McLaren, all these soccer rules okay. in the leagues. Diamante. Diamante. Yeah. Yeah, he's an amazing player. Diamante. Okay. Yeah. And obviously, because it's Ramadan, I need to ask a Ramadan question as well. Tell me something you love about your parents or something you appreciate from your parents. They're always there for me, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'll put you on the spot, sorry bro. No, that's it, that's the biggest one. They're always yeah. there no matter what, waking them up, have training today. Because I started playing for United, as you guys know, way well before I could drive. Yeah. So they took me everywhere. They're professional. Every day we had training. Some days it's just like recovery at Grange. Oh, you guys are, you're not from here, but like the beach. I don't leave the beach. Okay, so. yeah. So they have to get up. They're just there just so I could succeed. So that's something I appreciate. Yeah. Yeah. Inshallah, I see a lot more of you in the A-League, inshallah, if not more. Thanks. We'll see what happens, inshallah. Yeah. I appreciate you coming on, bro. Thank you, man. Appreciate inshallah, it. Inshallah, we'll keep in touch. Thanks. Yeah. Nice. <laughs>